Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Tonight on primetime, 21 states are reporting a sudden spike in COVID-19 cases. A warning from doctors who are urging people not to let their guard down. But first tonight, another day that brought rain across Metro Atlanta. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb tracking the system. Chris, a lot of folks wanting to know if we're done with the rain for the evening. Well, you know, the heaviest stuff has already moved away to the east of us, but the cold front still has not moved through yet. And as that front moves through, there is still the possibility of a few showers to develop. But right now, we're not seeing a lot of that here over on the west side. Most of the rain is over to the east right now. We had some of the heavier showers earlier that prompted some severe thunderstorm warnings earlier on the south side. That rain pretty much clearing out of Butts County right now. Also still some showers over Putnam County, Morgan County, Jasper County. That moves over into Oglethorpe County where we have some heavier rain. Not seeing a lot of lightning there. We do have a couple of lightning strikes down around Lake Sinclair in the Milledgeville area. We're drying out in Atlanta right now. We actually have had some sunshine come through to warm us back up into the 80s. Northeast Georgia, we watched some showers, some of those with thunder and lightning. Those are moving up into Rabin County. But this is what I want you to see here. Now, I know that's not that impressive. But you see just a couple little isolated showers that developed earlier along and just ahead of the cold front. As that front comes through our area tonight, it is still possible to see just a few of those isolated showers develop. And the ones that do develop could be strong with some winds or some pockets of heavy rain. But as you can see right now, not a lot happening um, with the passage of that front as it gets closer to us. Take a look at what we're watching out there right now. This is um, the future radar, and, and this kind of indicates what I'm talking about with that possibility tonight with the front moving through. We're in a break in the action right now. Even though we don't see any evidence of this right now, as the front comes in, it is possible, and this model is showing that possibility of some of those showers developing ahead of that front later on tonight, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Here we are at around midnight, a few of those showers here in Atlanta, and then moving on through the area. So it's not a big time threat, and it's not gonna last a long time, but there is still that chance for a few of those scattered showers that'll redevelop out there for tonight. Uh, in fact, temperatures have rebounded a little bit back to the 80s now that the sun has broken through some of those clouds before the front comes in, but stay with us. We're going to show you the areas that have the potential for still some strong storms later on tonight, and we'll let you know what happens after the front moves through and if it's going to keep us dry into the weekend. All right, Chris, it sure has been humid, that's for sure. Well, here we are 25 hours after most of the polls across Georgia closed for the primary, and we're still waiting for some of the results to come in to officially call some of these races, Jennifer, because there are votes that are still being counted as we speak. So as we get updates, we'll, of course, update you at the bottom of your screen. Yes, Cheryl, a handful of counties haven't fully reported results yet. That includes Fulton County, 
where they were still sorting through absentee ballots today at the Georgia World Congress Center. Now, the process has been slowed down by the record number of people voting by absentee ballots because of the coronavirus pandemic. That's in addition to problems that plagued polling locations throughout the day yesterday. Here's a look at some of the biggest congressional races and where they stand right now. In District 6, Karen Handel easily beat out her fellow Republicans for a chance to go up against Congresswoman Lucy McBath once again in November. The race will be a rematch of 2018 when McBath challenged Handel for the seat in a tight race and won. And in District 13, Democratic Congressman David Scott has made a late push to avoid a runoff. He's now at 50% plus one with just 10 precincts left to report. Earlier, the AP projected a likely runoff. This one, though, too close to call right now. And the field has narrowed a lot in Georgia's 7th Congressional District. Two Democrats will face off in a runoff, and a Republican newcomer won a solid majority against five other hopefuls. Doug Richards has a look at what's next. Republican Rich McCormick's website shows a video of the former U.S. Marine mowing through his opponents in what appears to be a game of rugby. The tough guy image helped sell McCormick, who is an ER doctor, as a guy who can overcome obstacles. And while the rugby scene was staged, McCormick did impressively plow through a large field of Republican opponents to earn the nomination without a runoff. This speaks to what, what politics should be about, which is an authentic message, authentic relationships, um, not talking points, but actually relationships. McCormick would replace Congressman Rob Woodall in the 7th District, which spans Gwinnett and Forsyth counties. Woodall is retiring from Congress after nearly losing a seat two years ago to former congressional aide Carolyn Bordeaux, who nearly won the Democratic nomination again last night. In a statement, Bordeaux said she's honored to finish first and added, it's time for our party to come together and go into November united against a Republican Party that has lost its moral bearing. But it appears she'll have to beat Brenda Romero Lopez in a runoff first. The state lawmaker and immigration attorney was way behind Bordeaux in Tuesday's primary, but expects better results in the runoff. I am the only candidate in this primary race that has both the experience and the grassroots organizing and community advocacy that's needed to actually flip a district. Lopez says Bordeaux should have beaten Woodall two years ago. That, Lopez says, suggests the need for a different Democrat in the 7th District this November. In the Democratic primary for one of Georgia's two U.S. Senate seats, John Ossoff is holding a clear lead. So now with 97 percent of precincts reporting, he has widened the gap a bit here. He now has 51 percent of the vote. So that is over the 50 plus one required to avoid a runoff. But we still have some results coming in, so we aren't officially calling this race yet. But if it maintains the lead that is there now, he will avoid an August runoff. The winner of the primary will challenge Republican incumbent David Perdue come November. Coming up at 9, we're going to take a deeper look at this specific Senate race, and we'll also have reaction from John Ossoff. And to get the latest election results from the primary, you can text the word, the word rather, results to 404-885-7600, or you can download our 11 Live app, and we'll send you a not notification. Anger and frustration. Everybody was angry and frustrated. Voters stuck waiting in line for hours. In fact, in Union City, we spotted voters still waiting to cast their ballot at midnight, three hours after Fulton County's extended hours ended at 9 p.m. It's just part of the issues we saw yesterday with machines not delivered on time and poll workers unsure how to work them. So how did this election go so wrong with several additional weeks in place to help train the poll workers? Some of it stems from the coronavirus, which impacted polling locations and also the ability to train polling workers. But it's actually far more complicated than that. Tracy A. McPeer is holding me powerful accountable. When you have the, the offices that are closed, you have, you're managing people teleworking from homes all over the county. We ran into a lot of, a lot of challenges this time. Fulton County's election chief Richard Barron admits Tuesday's primary had its problems, but says many were caused by COVID-19, like polling places changing location. 44 of the 45 were directly due to COVID. We had to get out ahead of household mailing to announce those changes. 
We had to try to get those publicized out there in, in any way that we could. Another challenge, also due to COVID-19, many older poll workers with experience opted out, so new poll workers signed up on brand new machines. New workers who were mostly trained online. You don't get your hands on the equipment. So a lot of poll workers were confused. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger's office says absentee ballot numbers were high across the state. More than 1.5 million were requested, as opposed to 37,000 in 2016. Fulton County's numbers followed suit. Four and a half times the amount of a normal presidential election. It was, it, it stretched us thin. Raffensperger's office says most counties across the state did just fine, and of the problems counties as a whole had, most were technical and easily fixed by 930 in the morning. So they say the responsibility for Fulton's problems throughout the day fall on the county. He can say say whatever he wants. I disagree with him. I think he's the the head election official in the state, and he can't wash his hands of all the responsibility. Moving forward, Raffensperger's office hopes that by the runoff election in August, more polling places will be open. His office also hopes the new poll workers will now have experience and be better equipped to use the machines. But again, they say that is up to each county. Barron says they learned a lot yesterday. They hope all the early voting sites can be open before the next election and are ready to finish this one. All I'm doing is looking forward to, to finishing the job of this election and looking forward to seeing what we can do better. Here in Fulton County, they started counting the absentee votes one week ago. Now, so far, they've tallied more than 75,000 votes and hope to be wrapped up at some point tonight. 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks, and we want to hear from you if you had problems while voting yesterday. Email us at whereatlspeaks at 11alive.com or call us at the number on your screen, 678-765-9514, and leave us a voice message. Don't forget to include your name and where you voted. We might use your message on air. Georgia's voting problems drawing attention and criticism from around the country. There are questions about whether or not what happened amounts to voter suppression. Hillary Clinton tweeted out the front page of the AJC and wrote what happened in Georgia yesterday was by design. Voter suppression is a threat to our democracy. Former Georgia gubernatorial candidate and voting rights activist Stacey Abrams agrees. Thousands of requests for absentee ballots were not returned and we know that this was a preventable problem if we had done the work, if the Secretary of State and his office had held to their responsibility. The ACLU of Georgia called the election a complete failure and says it is exploring all legal options on how to respond. Today, both the Atlanta and the Gwinnett chapters of the NAACP had a press conference addressing voter issues among minorities in Gwinnett County specifically. And what we saw was that the uh, inequality of distrib distribution of equipment in the um, African American communities. We had lines, we had uh, equipment that was not delivered on time. We had managers who did not know what they were supposed to do. We reached out to the Secretary of State's office, also to Fulton County election officials. We have not heard a response back. As soon as we do, we will pass it on to you. Hispanics and Latinos are expected to play a larger role in this year's presidential elections. The Pew Research Center found that 32 million Latinos are eligible to vote nationwide in the 2020 presidential election. That is 2 million more than African American voters. Our Elwin Lopez has a look at how that impacts us here in Georgia. Right now, today, Latinos have the power to determine the outcome of statewide competitive elections, and that's what's making Georgia a swing state for this presidential election cycle. For the first time, Latinos are on track to be the largest share of non-white voters in 2020. That's according to the Pew Research Center. Latinos and African Americans are paying attention to the issues, are paying attention to the elections, and do want to exercise their right to vote to ensure that we have elected officials that reflect our values. Jerry Gonzalez, executive director of the Georgia Association of Latino Elected Officials, says voting should be more accessible to all. He says during this economic recession, essential workers of minority communities 
are moving more to provide for their families. Gonzalez says same-day voter registration, which is done in other states, would enable Georgia voters to register and vote at the same time, making it easier for those communities. With people moving quite a bit, uh, it's important to have same-day voter registration so that way people will be able to update their address of where they're voting. He says allowing voters to cast their ballot at a precinct near them instead of where they previously lived. So many states have same-day voter registration. Georgia should move in that direction too. Citing the issues at the polls on Tuesday, Gonzalez says every single voter needs to do everything in their power to make sure their vote is counted. Not just this election, but the one in August, the one in November, and the one in January. People who had trouble voting yesterday may have been asked to fill out a provisional ballot. The Secretary of State's office says they were used when the voting machines were unavailable and ballots were automatically counted. But if you want to check your ballot status, you have a couple of options here. One way is to log on to the My Voter page on the Secretary of State's website. And there you can find your provisional ballot status. You can also call your local election office. You can find those numbers on 11alive.com. Still to come, why the country's top infectious disease expert says the coronavirus pandemic turned out to be his worst nightmare. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe and get in on the conversation in the community section. There's more 11 Alive news in primetime after this break. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. The country's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, says the coronavirus pandemic has turned out to be his worst nightmare, and he wants everybody to know that pandemic is far from over. Yes, yeah, speaking at the Bio International Convention webinar Tuesday, Dr. Fauci says scientists are also at the very beginning of understanding how COVID-19 works. Like, oh my goodness, uh, when is it going to end? It really is very complicated. So we're, we're just at almost the beginning of really understanding it. He pointed to one of the unknowns as being long-term effects of the disease, even after patients initially recover. Every state in the country is reopening in some form or fashion, and at the same time, many are experiencing an increase in the number of COVID-19 cases. As NBC's Wendy Woolfolk explains, health experts are warning everyone not to let their guard down. With more people out of their homes. This is a new thing, a new way of life for everyone. Inevitably, there will also be more cases of COVID-19. Reopen, reopen, reopen. Be careful, be careful, be careful. A delicate balance to strike for everyone to move forward. Recovery is going to be very complicated. Uh, we are trying to do the step-by-step -step approach depending on the context of the area. Black lives matter! 
Another complication, the protests that started in Minneapolis amidst the ongoing global pandemic. Health officials urging all who participated to be tested. The test was really quick and now I'm on my way home to tell my wife that, you know, it's done. Across the country, 21 states have now seen an increase in cases. Arizona lifted its stay-at-home orders on May 15th. The state has seen a 40% increase in the cases since last week and eight out of every 10 hospital beds in use. Another example why healthcare experts warn now is not the time to relax social distancing protocols. The bottom line is all the scientific evidence we have right now is pretty clear uh, that people without symptoms who are infected can and do spread the disease. So that's why you gotta wear a mask and you gotta keep that physical distance. Advice for the entire nation managing the reopening and resurgence in a COVID-19 world. Today, DeKalb County expanded its COVID-19 testing to address the higher number of cases there. Another testing site is now open at the Salem Bible Church in Stonecrest. Right now, the county has the third highest number of cases in the state behind Fulton and Gwinnett. As of today, they have nearly 4,200 cases. There are now five different places to get tested in DeKalb County. More than three quarters of Atlanta business owners and executives say they want to continue to open the economy in phases. The Business Journal surveyed more than 200 business leaders. 78% of those that they surveyed in the Atlanta market said that they liked this phased approach to reopening. That's 1% less than the national average for some context. But it's important to know the timing of the survey. All these questions were asked right before Georgia's businesses started to reopen. Our weekly visit with humor. And we'll get back to Cheryl in just a minute. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Live Storm Trackers, and we're watching some showers over on the east side that are moving away. And I know you're looking at this thinking, okay, we're done with the rain, right? Well, not necessarily. Uh, we still have a cold front that's going to come through, and there may be a few showers that will develop along that front later on tonight. Still potential to move on through. We don't think it's going to be widespread or anything overly to be concerned about, but still that chance tonight for a couple of isolated showers around. You can see that rain is now mainly over to the east. It has moved out of Butts County. We still have some showers in Morgan County, Putnam County and Oglethorpe County as well, and that moves up toward the north and nothing going on in Atlanta. We had some showers that came here through here a little bit earlier, and then as they left Atlanta, they moved up 85 and 985 up into northeast Georgia. Some of those had some pockets of moderate rain or heavy rain with it and also some lightning, but that's now all moving out. Still a few of those showers left over into Rabin County and along the front. Uh, or ahead of it, we have been seeing just a couple little spotty showers. You saw those that developed earlier and then they fed, uh, kind of faded out. And now over into Alabama, still along that front, there are a couple of other showers that are trying to develop. And that's where we're going to be focusing over the next few hours here to see if any more showers develop along that front. And that's going to swing through our area later on in the evening hours. And then we're thinking after midnight and after it's going to push off to the east and then any rain chances will be over with for us. Take a live look out there right now. We have uh, moved our cameras to look over toward the west. And even though we had some of the rain and storms a little bit earlier, we're seeing some sunshine coming out now. And in fact, it's getting closer to the horizon. This is in Gwinnett County looking toward the west. They're over the roof of the Infinite Energy Arena and just over the tree line. Here's another view as we're looking looking to the west as well. This is uh, looking over Truist Park. It's hard to see there, uh, but we again see the sunshine there getting closer to the horizon. It's going to be setting in just a just a little while. So here's a look at what we're watching for the rest of the evening hours. Uh, did you uh, were you able to see a, a, a rainbow tonight? We've had a few folks reporting rainbows, and this is from 11 Alive Community Storm Tracker Alec McQuaid in Swanee. That's a nice vivid rainbow that he got a picture of a little bit earlier today when some of those storms moved out of that area. Now, the Storm Prediction Center still keeps us in this marginal risk for severe storms tonight. Now, it would only be isolated activity, and anything with it would be winds, frequent lightning, uh, maybe some pockets of heavy rain. But again, it's going to be a broken line that comes in along with that front. And this model is showing that happening maybe between 10 and midnight with that next line that's going to move in. And then we begin the clearing out process and it cools off a little bit in the morning. You know, we are waking up to those really muggy conditions uh, every day, every morning lately. Well, in the morning, we'll wake up in the upper 60s, still mild out there, but it's going to be feeling better than those 70s and the drier air starting to come in too. a high of 85. 
We'll give that a nine on the wasometer. There's that one area of rain coming in and then see that's not that impressive at 10 o'clock tonight, just developing along that front that passes through during the nighttime hours and then the wind shifts comes out of the north and west and that brings in the drier air, lower humidity and it pushes the rain out of here too. So we'll have decreasing clouds here. Highs near 85 tomorrow and then uh, mostly sunny Friday and Saturday lows in the 60s, highs in the 80s on Sunday. A few more clouds, a little more moisture. I had to add in a 20% chance for a shower. I really think most of us will stay dry and then partly cloudy Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Still with those lows in the 60s and highs in the 80s. Stay with us. We have more to come on prime time. It's a limit guest to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. Our weekly visit with humorist Ron Hart touches on COVID-19 and pets and a lack of social distancing during the protests. We always want to point out these are just Ron's opinions. He talked with Jeff Hollinger a bit earlier. We are in the second week of nationwide protests following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Two big moments in the country are now head to head and even overlapping the COVID-19 pandemic and the protests against racism, institutionalized racism in the United States, most notably with law enforcement in minority communities. Joining me now is national columnist Ron Hart. Ron, we are still in a pandemic here, but there is not a lot of social distancing going on in the protests. Uh, it certainly has a different look, at least the public face of COVID today as opposed to a month ago. Yeah, it appears that social justice trumps social distancing, right? So I think the COVID thing got milked a little further, a little longer than it should have been. And all the attention now has been drawn toward the uh, to the riots, the looting, and, uh, and, and the social justice type of things. The World Health Organization and scientists have said from the very beginning, animals could get COVID, and now they come back and say that's not possible. We continue to get so much conflicting information about this pandemic, whether it's going to a Kroger or a Publix. Is there COVID potentially on the bags? Is it on the shelves? Is it on the meat packages? You know, the, yeah. the responses to this, the answers to this are, are absolutely all over the place. It's been maddening because we, we understand the health organizations don't know, right? So you're supposed to wear masks. 
you're not supposed to wear masks. The World Health Organization, who said dogs could get it, a lion got it one time. Now they say dogs can't get it, so you don't have to quarantine your dog. So I guess you can say uh, who let the dogs out. You could say that, but uh, yeah, I would not say sure. that. You would say that. Wolf, <laughs> Wolf, thank you, sir. <laughs> We have some breaking news right now in the Democratic primary race for one of Georgia's two U.S. Senate seats. The AP is now officially calling John Ossoff as the winner with more than 97 percent of the precincts reporting at 51 percent. He now avoids a August runoff. So he goes on now to the November election to challenge Republican incumbent David Perdue come November. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message. We continue to watch these showers that moved through our area earlier push on off to the east and they're moving away. In fact, we do have some thunder and lightning uh, getting closer to Thompson, Georgia, out I-20 and near Hancock County at Sparta, near Milledgeville, Lake Sinclair, seeing some of that rain still. Lake Oconee still getting some showers, but at least it's starting to taper off a little bit. Here in Atlanta, we are fine now, but we're not totally finished with the action. We had the rain that came through Atlanta earlier that moved up to the north and east, a couple lingering showers there in Rabin County. The cold front is still over to the west of us and you can see just a couple of spotty showers have been developing along that but it hasn't really been uh, that impressive at all. Take a look at the computer models as we go through the rest of the nighttime hours tonight and this is what the computer models are indicating as that front moves in, we might see a few showers developing. Now, as of right now, we haven't seen this part or this intense of a line developing along that. It's just a few spotty showers, but we can see tonight going through the nighttime hours 
as the front moves through, it's going to just add a little bit of lift and some of this moisture that we have in the atmosphere and kick off a few of these showers. This is at 10 o'clock moving through West Georgia around midnight here in Atlanta. It'll move through pretty quickly within some of those cells. It's possible that we could have some pockets of moderate rain or heavy rain, maybe some gusty winds with it too, but we don't think our severe weather threat tonight is going to be really widespread. And in fact, this line may be really broken and not impact everybody as it swings through. Stay with us. We're going to keep monitoring this as we check on some of those little showers that are starting to develop and we'll let you know whether or not that's going to develop into that line and sweep through later on tonight. More on that in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, thank you. So some of the results are still coming in from Georgia's primary more than 24 hours ago, but we do have some breaking news in one of the races that people are watching very closely. The AP has just moments ago declared John Ossoff the winner of the U.S. Senate Democratic race. John Ossoff quickly established himself as a clear leader with 97% of the precincts reporting. He has 51% of the void vote, so avoiding that runoff in August. Again, AP has now officially declared him the winner, so he will challenge Republican incumbent David Perdue in November. In District 6, Karen Handel easily beat out her fellow Republicans for a chance to go up against Congresswoman Lucy McBath in November. The race turning into a rematch of 2018 when Ms. McBath challenged Handel for the seat in a tight race and won. Six district, of course, made up of Cobb, Fulton, and DeKalb. In 2018, results showed it was rapidly shifting from Republican to Democrat, with stronger support for McBath in North DeKalb and East Cobb supporting Candle. Fulton County pretty much split 50-50 between the two. And in the Fulton County District Attorney race, Fannie Willis is still ahead of Democratic incumbent Paul Howard right now. That race likely headed to a runoff in August. Howard has held that position since 1997, becoming the first African American to be elected District Attorney in the state of Georgia. Results come on the heels of voting issues statewide. Georgia's problems making national headlines, some even claiming voter suppression. Joining us now, Dr. Andra Gillespie of Emory University. Dr. Gillespie, thank you so much for being with us. We did want to get your thoughts on those claims first of voter suppression in Georgia's primary election. Well, there are some longstanding issues that were uh, reared their heads yesterday, compounded by other issues. So I wouldn't say that everything um, relates to voter suppression, that we understand why there are concerns about that. Now, I think probably one of the biggest cases to be made uh, for looking at voter suppression is the perpetual problem of why there are long lines in some districts, especially precincts that are majority minority. And so is there something systemic that causes election officials to routinely underestimate the number of voters who are going to turn out in black districts and thus giving them fewer workers and fewer uh, fewer voting machines. But there were so many other issues at play in this election. So for instance, if we think about the social distancing requirements, the extra cleaning requirements, if we think about the new voting machines um, and the fact that there were uh, election poll workers who canceled at the last minute, leaving the place understaffed, all of these things combined to create a perfect storm that actually made uh, things really inefficient in the precincts that were most adversely affected by this. Mike, last question for you. What do you think the chances are of Democrats actually flipping either of the U.S. Senate seats come November? Uh, I think their chances are very, very good, quite frankly. Uh, as a Republican, we've sort of uh, watched the demographic shift uh, to more Republican-leaning groups, in, not just in Metro Atlanta, um, county by county. Uh, we saw uh, Henry County, Rockdale County, DeKalb, and Fulton a long time ago. Uh, I think this fall, they're just might be a possibility of either one or both of those Senate seats belonging in the Democrat column. All right, Mike Hassinger, Dr. Andre Gillespie, thank you so much for being with us. Remember to get the latest election results from the primary. You can text the word results to the number on your screen. It's 404-885-7600. You can also download our 11 Alive app to receive notifications. And as always, you can follow our 11 Alive live blog on the election to see the latest information, including the numerous reports about voting problems across Metro Atlanta. Again, you can look for that on 11alive.com. 
The organizers of the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo, which are now the 2021 Games in the same city, talk today about how that will look different because of the postponement due to coronavirus. The organizers said that the Olympics next year will be a simplified version of what has always been the biggest sporting event in the world by far. The games were originally scheduled to start next month. They were postponed to 2021 because of the pandemic. Today, organizers said the Olympics will not be done with grand splendor this time around, but they didn't give specifics on how they're going to modify the events, potentially modify crowds that come, or when all of those things would be decided. Since this postponement was announced, organizers have been looking at ways to reduce costs and really streamline these Olympic Games. Today, Major League Soccer officially announced its return to the games with the MLS's back tournament. It's a World Cup style event to be held at Disney Orlando. All 26 teams will train and report to Disney for the tournament to start July 8th. Now there will be three regular season games, then a knockout stage that will lead to the championship on August 11th. Every game will be nationally televised and after the tournament, there are still a lot of questions about how and when the regular season will begin, but Commissioner Don Garver wanted the league to return as soon as possible. Getting out early is important, and it's not necessarily getting out first because you got to get it right, uh, but getting out there and ensuring that we have the certainty to play games is crucial to the future success of the league. Uh, without the concept of a tournament, we'd still be sitting here waiting. While negotiations were contentious and players were concerned about their health, there will be testing every other day, but not for staff who won't be directly in contact with the players like Disney workers and drivers. So there's still a threat of getting sick, but Atlanta United's goalkeeper says they just have to stay focused. You have to be able to put it to the side uh, as difficult as it is. Um, you know, we 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 understand uh, our job is to go and play games um, and Orlando was voted on, it was passed, and now we have to go out and perform. Coming up, the Trump administration opposed to extending the extra $600 for unemployment due to coronavirus when the benefit is set to end. Next. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. The Trump administration says it is against extending the federal unemployment benefit program beyond July. The weekly $600 payment is in addition to the normal unemployment benefits in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Democrats have pushed a plan that would extend the benefits through January. Right now, they are set to end July 31st. Well, there are a lot of coronavirus rumors on social media. One viral post claims wearing masks can weaken your immune system, but it's not true. Our Verify team in D.C. is fact-checking the claim. The goal of the Verify team is to separate fact from fiction, and there's a lot of misinformation to avoid when it comes to the coronavirus. Including claims like this, shared thousands of times, saying wearing a mask will weaken your immune system and lead you to getting sick. So let's verify, does wearing a mask weaken your immune system? Our top sources are the CDC, the Mayo Clinic, and Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. We know one of the main reasons the CDC has recommended everyone wear masks is because of asymptomatic cases. Even if you don't think you're sick and aren't showing symptoms, health experts say wearing a mask is an important tool against COVID-19. Importantly, I think what people don't fully appreciate is that putting a mask on yourself is more to prevent you from infecting someone else. And if everybody does that, we're each protecting each other. After initially saying only healthcare workers and those who are sick should wear masks, the CDC revised their guidelines, saying they should be worn in community settings while also staying six feet apart from others. The Mayo Clinic also advises similarly, saying routinely washing your hands, avoid touching your face, and properly maintain whatever mask you're wearing. Neither mentions anything about a reduced ability to fight other infection. Those supporting this claim say because the mask keeps you from being exposed to things like bacteria, that will weaken your immune system. But experts say, remember, that bacteria comes from food, water, and our environment everywhere. Millions of microbes will still get into our systems one way or the other meaning our immune systems are constantly operating with or without a mask. So we can verify, no, research does not support the idea that wearing a mask will weaken your immune system and make you more vulnerable to the coronavirus. We are still watching those showers over to the east of us that are moving away, and now our focus is going to be if any additional showers will develop to the west as a cold front is going to be passing through. And that front is right up here as it's crossing through Alabama, just about to move into northwest Georgia. And you can see a little bit there in Walker County, some of that over in Alabama, just a couple of showers that are developing along that front. Our models are indicating that as that front comes into Georgia, we're going to see a few more of these showers developing along that. So even though we saw the showers come through earlier. We're in a break right now. It is still possible tonight that we'll see a few more showers uh, that come through late evening and then ending pretty much after midnight as they push off to the east. We still have some rain with that first wave that came through earlier today over at Eatonton, Lake Oconee, Morgan County, Greene County, getting some of those showers also down near Lake Sinclair, seeing a few showers. We're dry here in Atlanta right now. Northeast Georgia, we watched the showers move on out of here, and now we're just keeping an eye out to the west along that front if any additional showers will develop and then move through the metro area a little bit later on. Here's another look from the Gwinnett County Chamber of Commerce as the sun is going down now. You can see it there on the horizon. Look at the 75 Office Park camera. You see the spider crawling along right there in front of the lens, just kind of moved away there. But we're also watching, look at that, the last little bits of the sun going down right there um, on the horizon. Just a few clouds around as well and a really nice sunset out there. In fact, we might just see the last little bits of that sunshine just disappear if we can hold on to this for just a few more minutes. In fact, I don't know if y'all can take that full. This is remote 58. I don't know if y'all can take that full while I'm walking over to the key. 
Okay, and if so, we might see the last little bits of that sun drop, just kind of barely there hitting the horizon. Of course, we can be entertained by the spider as well, <laughs> while that last little bit there is going down uh, on the sunset. But isn't that beautiful, just to see that sun that is setting out there and just a few of those clouds uh, that are out there. No rain here, but as we're looking over toward the west, that's where that front's gonna be coming from, and we may see that, um, uh, that little bit of rain start to develop there along that frontal boundary as it moves on through. So good night, sun. It was great seeing you there for a little while today in between uh, the rain that came through a little bit earlier. And then there's our spider uh, still working on that web right in front of our camera lens. There's the last little bit of the sun, that last sun drop that's now moving there below the horizon. And then we're entertained also by the, uh, the spider here as well. And thank you for our producers for letting us hang on this for just a little bit longer so we can see that sun sunset happening live on air right now, and there it goes, just below the horizon. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it's kind of nice to see that. All right, let me show you what we're watching with uh, the, uh, the system that is pushing out of our area. And it did leave us some rain. About three quarters of an inch of rain fell in Atlanta today. That surplus is more than 15 inches above where we should be in rainfall for the year. We got up to 84 today, and then the rain came, dropped us into the 60s, into the 70s, and then it moved out. We had some sunshine. We went back up into the 80s today, but that was still a little bit below where we should be for this time of year, just by a couple of degrees. Now, here's the good news. We've been telling you about uh, the drier air that's uh, going to be filtering in. We've been dealing with a very tropical air mass, very humid air, very muggy conditions out there and now that's going to change as the front comes through tonight it's going to clean out our atmosphere dry us out a little bit so we're watching the dew points that we've been dealing with in the 70s that is oppressive humidity oppressive air that's going to drop into the 60s and then even into the 50s here by Saturday and that is going to be a nicer feel to the air with the lower relative humidity before that starts coming back up as we get into it next week so here's a look at temperatures around North Georgia 77 right now Duluth is 78 Look at Rome and Dalton. You're in the 80s there. Rome at 86 degrees as that sunshine came out today, really heating things up there. 83 right now in Athens. Most places, though, are holding there in the 70s. Now, tomorrow, here's the big change. All right, we're going to have a lot of sunshine. We may have a few clouds early in the morning, and then those will be uh, diminishing during the day. Plenty of sunshine. We warm up into the low to mid 80s, and remember, it's going to be drier air, so it's not going to be as humid out there. And the, those 80s are going to feel actually pretty comfortable with that sunshine. A 9 on the wasometer, that's our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. Highs near 85 with those clouds decreasing, giving us some sunshine. All right, so here's that first wave of rain pushing off to the east. We're fine in Atlanta now. But here is the cold front that's coming in, okay? Look at the wind shift. It's from the south right now, very warm and muggy. And then behind the front, that wind comes out of the north. And so it's that clash here where we may see a few of those showers that could still develop. This is at 10 o'clock tonight. You see, it's not that impressive. I don't want you to think, oh man, we've got this big squall line coming in because that's, that's not it. It's just a few showers developing along the front. It moves through after midnight. It's well over to the east of us early in the morning. And there's that northerly flow. That's what's pushing that rain out. And it's opening up the door to the drier air that's moving in as well. 85 for a high tomorrow with decreasing clouds. And then really comfortable mornings on Friday and Saturday. Saturday, mid 60s with highs in the mid 80s on Sunday. A few more clouds, a little bit of moisture. I just had to introduce a 20% chance for a shower here on Sunday, but I really think most of us will stay dry. And then Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, low still in the 60s, highs in the mid 80s, but we'll see a few more clouds that'll mix in with the sun at times. Stay with us. We have more to come on 11 Alive Prime Time. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. 
There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. For We've heard a lot of reasons why things didn't go as planned for Georgia's primary, but what impact did that really have on voters? Investigator Rebecca Lindstrom looked through the complaints that we received to get a better understanding of what voters experienced. On election day, we received complaints about 71 different polling locations in the Metro's four most populated counties. Viewers in Fulton and Gwinnett had the most to say with 24 complaints in each of those counties. But with Fulton and DeKalb now under state investigation, we know there are more. In Gwinnett, the main complaint was a big one missing equipment at voting stations. We're talking about voting machines, printers, and scanners, the essentials needed to place a vote. In Fulton, the equipment was there, but voters say it just wasn't working. Whether it was lack of training or broken machines, voters at more than a dozen locations had to use paper ballots. It was the same in DeKalb, where provisional ballots were in short supply. Locations didn't anticipate needing them for every voter, so some precincts only had a few dozen on hand. And in Cobb, four people reached out to us upset that precincts either opened late or didn't have enough equipment or staff, creating wait times of up to five hours. We asked Dr. Andrew Gillespie, a professor of political science at Emory University, for her take on it all. I think the best approach is to figure out how to address the logistical and the tactical problems so that in November, nobody is accusing you of actually being sloppy to the point that it might actually discourage certain people from voting. There is concern some of these problems may have intentionally targeted the black community. Of the 71 complaints we've received so far, about a third are from precincts that are in zip codes with a higher than average black population. I'm not willing to say yet that this was um, sort of politically motivated to do a bad job at execution, but if it happens again, it looks like that there's a certain uh, level of callous indifference that could actually end up being really harmful to one's ability to be able to exercise their franchise. We have reached out to county boards to get a better picture of the problems and just who was most impacted. Thanks to all of you who shared your stories with us throughout the course of election day. 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. We do wanna hear from you. If you had problems voting yesterday and you haven't reached out yet, email us at where Atlanta speaks at 11alive.com or you can give us a call at 678-765-9514. Leave a voicemail. Please remember to include your name and where you voted and we might use your messages on air. 
All right, still to come on primetime, growing calls to defund law enforcement in response to police brutality. Now a proposal is moving forward in one local community with a vote expected in just a matter of days. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email. Send 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. First tonight, our 11 Live storm trackers filmed the pouring rain earlier today. These are from Roswell and Marietta. We got some at my house too, Ron. I, I think it was happening up there in Roswell and Alpharetta area where we live as well. So that rain is passing through. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb is tracking some of those strong storms as it moves through tonight. Hey, Chris. Yeah, Cheryl and, and Ron, we had one round of rain come through earlier today that had that heavy rain with it and thunder and lightning. And we, we've been getting a break here for a while. And um, we're going to see another round potentially, though, tonight with the passage of a cold front. Uh, I know you see my phone sticking up right here. This is because we just started a Facebook Live, like right before the news came and we've got almost 200 people on already. I'm going to be continuing our conversation about what's happening with the weather tonight on Facebook Live. If you want to join me there at Chris Holcomb 11 Alive, that's my Facebook page. So there's that one round of rain that came through earlier. We still have some showers around Lake Oconee. Things are starting to taper off in Putnam County, Morgan County, and Greene County. That still has some rain and lightning with it at Sparta. That moves on over toward the Thompson area. In Atlanta, we're fine now. We've had a break for a while. The showers that came through our area moved up 85 and 980. Now they're exiting Raven County and now though we focus out to the west and there's a cold front still out to the west and I know this doesn't look that impressive, but there are a couple showers still developing along that front. You can see these between Cedar Bluff and Fort Payne in Alabama. A couple little showers popped up there in Walker County now over parts of Catoosa County and what we're going to be watching as this front comes into our area tonight, it may develop a few more showers with it, but at this point we're not overly concerned about active severe weather or really a 
lot of rain with that. So let me show you what we're watching. This is our computer model, one of our high resolution models that is showing what could potentially happen there with uh, that area of rain. Now I know we're not seeing exactly this depiction right now, but the models are thinking as that front comes in here, We'll see a few more showers later tonight at 10, starting to develop along that front, and then they'll sweep through the Atlanta area around midnight and then push on off to the east and fall apart during the late night hours. And at this point, I'll show you the new map coming up in just a few minutes from the Storm Prediction Center. They have now taken us out of the marginal or the level one risk for severe storms. Stay with us. We're going to keep watching that area of rain out to the west along that front and let you know how it continues to develop. And I'll continue this conversation on Facebook Live now if you want to join me there. All right, hi to all your Facebook Live friends, Chris. Thanks a lot. We are still waiting for complete results from Georgia's primary election. After a long day yesterday, a meltdown at some of the polls and frustration among many Georgia voters. Three counties as we speak are still counting votes right now, including Fulton County. The process really slowed down by a record number of absentee ballots this year, Ron. And you know, Cheryl, one of the biggest contests we're following right here at 11 Alive is a Democratic race for U.S. Senate. So in the last hour, AP has declared John Ossoff as the winner. John Ossoff uh, quickly establishes himself as a clear leader with 97% of the precincts reporting. He's got 51% of the vote, avoiding a runoff in August, and he's going to challenge Republican incumbent David Perdue in November. Doug Richards has more on that race. Like most political candidates, John Ossoff's personal appearances all but disappeared in March, shortly after the former congressional candidate qualified to run for the U.S. Senate at the state capitol. But because Ossoff was the Democratic face of the most expensive congressional race in human history in 2017, when he narrowly lost a special election in the 6th District, his name recognition endured. He hovered around the 50% mark for much of today. Yet when we talked to him this afternoon, he wanted no part of declaring victory. I'm really not here to discuss the numbers, the outcomes, who's on top and who's not. And whether folks voted for me or voted for somebody else, I'm going to fight to make sure their votes are counted. Ossoff says state and local officials need to fix the election system that produced hours-long lines in Fulton County and elsewhere during voting Tuesday. Ossoff faced a spirited but underfunded challenge from former Lieutenant Governor candidate Sarah Riggs Amico and former Columbus Mayor Teresa Tomlinson. Tomlinson is the second place finisher and would face Ossoff in a runoff if there is one. We know this with $30 million in name recognition, every single Democrat who pulled a ballot knew who he was and 52% chose someone else. Uh, not because they don't like him, uh, that's not fair, that's not accurate but because they just don't believe he's ready for the United States Senate. After Tomlinson spoke with us, Ossoff's lead grew. And tonight the question is whether it's enough for him to set his sights on Republican David Perdue instead of a Democratic runoff. All right, so here are a few more results in key races. This is District 6 right now. Karen Handel easily beating out her fellow Republicans for a chance to go up against Congresswoman Lucy McBath once again in November. Now, this is a rematch from 2018 when McBath beat Handel for that seat. Turning now to District 13, Democratic Congressman David Scott has made a late push to avoid a runoff. He's now at 50% plus one with just 10 precincts left to report. Now, earlier the AP projected a likely runoff here, but right now it's just too close to call. So to get the latest election results, just text the word results to the number on your screen, 404-885-7600, or just download our 11 Alive app. Our primary election went until midnight for some voters. People waited in line for many, many hours to vote in some of Georgia's largest counties last night. Polling places dealt with major issues like machines not arriving on time, poll workers not knowing how to use those new machines correctly. We received so many emails from people who shared their experience. Some really frustrated and discouraged. Some of them had to say leave because they simply couldn't wait in the line that long. There was a lot of finger pointing when it came to who was responsible. Was it the state's responsibility or the county's responsibility? So Tracy A. McPeer set out to hold the powerful accountable. 
Fulton County's election chief Richard Barron admits Tuesday's primary had its problems, but says many were caused by COVID-19, like 45 polling places changing location and older poll workers with experience opting out. So new poll workers signed up on brand new machines and mostly trained online. You don't get your hands on the equipment. So a lot of poll workers were confused. The high number of absentee ballot requests in Fulton County also caused challenges. Four and a half times the amount of a normal presidential election. It was, it, it stretched us thin. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger's office says most counties across the state did just fine. And out of the problems counties as a whole had, most were technical and easily fixed by 930 in the morning. So they say the responsibility for Fulton's problems throughout the day fall on the county. He can say, say whatever he wants. I disagree with him. I think he's the, the head election official in the state and he can't wash his hands of all the responsibility. Moving forward, Raffensperger's office hopes that by the runoff election in August, more polling places will be open. His office also hopes the new poll workers will now have experience and be better equipped to use the machines. But again, they say that is up to each county. All I'm doing is looking forward to, to finishing the job of this election and looking forward to seeing what we can do better. Here in Fulton County, they started counting the absentee votes one week ago. Now, so far, they've tallied more than 75,000 votes and hope to be wrapped up at some point tonight. Widespread voting problems were reported in at least six metro counties, those issues bringing up accusations of voter suppression. Democratic Representative Hank Johnson said what happened during Georgia's primaries was an embarrassment. Very suspicious activity occurred, which seemed to be confined to areas where uh, minorities, including African Americans, uh, predominantly live. That's rather... Uh, surprising. But then again, when you look at Georgia's history of voter suppression, it's not really surprising. We reached out to the Secretary of State's office to see if there are any investigations underway about suppression. We'll let you know when we get a response. There is, however, a state investigation underway into the overall voting problems yesterday. You know, Hispanics and Latinos are expected to play a huge role, a larger role in this year's presidential elections. The Pew Research Center found that 32 million Latinos are eligible to vote nationwide in the 2020 presidential elections. So that's 2 million more than black voters. 11 Alive's Ellen Lopez takes a look at how this is going to impact Georgia. Right now, today, Latinos have the power to determine the outcome of statewide competitive elections. And that's what's making Georgia a swing state for this presidential election cycle. For the first time, Latinos are on track to be the largest share of non-white voters in 2020. That's according to the Pew Research Center. Latinos and African Americans are paying attention to the issues, are paying attention to the elections, and do want to exercise their right to vote to ensure that we have elected officials that reflect our values. Jerry Gonzalez, executive director of the Georgia Association of Latino Elected Officials, says voting should be more accessible to all. He says during this economic recession, essential workers of minority communities are moving more to provide for their families. Gonzalez says same-day voter registration, which is done in other states, would enable Georgia voters to register and vote at the same time making it easier for those communities. With people moving quite a bit, uh, it's important to have same-day voter registration so that way people will be able to update their address of where they're voting. He says allowing voters to cast their ballot at a precinct near them instead of where they previously lived. So many states have same-day voter registration. Georgia should move in that direction too. Citing the issues at the polls on Tuesday, Gonzalez says every single voter needs to do everything in their power to make sure their vote is counted. Not just this election, but the one in August, the one in November, and the one in January. So the process of counting absentee ballots is well underway. The state still does not have an official number for how many absentee ballots it received. But we, we know more than one and a half million Georgians actually requested one. And despite the push for voters to stay home and 
and mail in those ballots and avoid the risk of coronavirus. Some voters are complaining the state's absentee ballot process has been riddled with issues. Stacey Abrams of the voting rights group Fair Fight Action spoke about some of the issues she experienced. My absentee ballot, when it finally arrived, had an unusable return envelope. And so I had to vote in person today because I could not replace that envelope. We know across the state, thousands of requests for absentee ballots were not returned, and we know that this was a preventable problem. So Fulton County in particular is already under investigation by the state after complaints people were not getting their absentee ballots. It's important to make sure your voice is heard, and uh, we've heard your questions about how to make sure your absentee ballot was counted. So this is what we know. You can always go to the state's My Voter page to enter your personal information. You should see something that says click here for absentee ballot status. So if you can't click it, your vote has not been accepted. Now, if you can't click the link, but you did send in that ballot, you should screenshot the page or take a copy of that page and then send it to your county elections office. 11 Alive has all the latest on Georgia's primary elections. You just download the app to get notifications on the latest results as they pour in. Still to come, why the country's top infectious disease expert says the coronavirus pandemic turned out to be his worst nightmare. We are streaming right now on 11 Alive's YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. We got more 11 Alive news prime time after the break. Majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or alter. The country's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, says the coronavirus turned out to be the worst nightmare of his life, but he wants everyone to know the pandemic is far from over. Yeah, he was speaking at the Bio International Convention webinar Tuesday. Dr. Fauci says his scientists are also at the very beginning of understanding how COVID-19 works. Like, oh my goodness, when is it going to end? It really is very complicated. So we're, we're just at almost the beginning of really understanding it. So he pointed to one of the unknowns being long-term effects of the disease, even after patients initially recover. You know, every state in the country is uh, reopening in some capacity right now, just like Georgia. At the same time, when many are experiencing an increase in the number of COVID-19 cases, as NBC's Wendy Wolfolk explains, health experts are warning everyone not to let their guard down with more people out of their homes. This is a new thing, a new way of life for everyone. Inevitably, there will also be more cases of COVID-19. Reopen, reopen, reopen. Be careful, be careful, be careful. A delicate balance to strike for everyone to move forward. Recovery is gonna be very complicated. Uh, we are trying to do the step-by-step -step approach depending on the context of the area. Black lives Another complication, the protests that started in Minneapolis. 
amidst the ongoing global pandemic. Health officials urging all who participated to be tested. The test was really quick and now I'm on my way home to tell my wife that, you know, it's done. Across the country, 21 states have now seen an increase in cases. Arizona lifted its stay-at-home orders on May 15th. The state has seen a 40% increase in the cases since last week and eight out of every 10 hospital beds in use. Another example why healthcare experts warn now is not the time to relax social distancing protocols. The bottom line is all the scientific evidence we have right now is pretty clear uh, that people without symptoms who are infected can and do spread the disease. So that's why you got to wear a mask and you got to keep that physical distance. Advice for the entire nation managing the reopening and resurgence in a COVID-19 world. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. You see my phone here uh, on the screen. I still have oh, between 100 and 100, almost 150 people on Facebook Live right now. A lot of folks are asking about when are we going to get some relief and dry out. And they're talking about more than just the rain moving out, but also the humidity moving out with some drier air moving our way. That is on the way. We just have to get this cold front through our area tonight and well ahead of that front. We had a few showers and thunderstorms that came through our area earlier. Those are now off to the east. They're now ending around Lake Oconee, ending over in Putnam County near Eatonton. Uh, still a few showers around Lake Sinclair at Milledgeville over towards Sparta, headed toward Thompson. We have some moderate to heavy rain there with some thunder and lightning as well. But back in Atlanta, we have been dry for a little while. And in northeast Georgia, the showers that came through our area earlier moved up to the north. Still a few of those hanging out in Rabin County, but those are moving away. But we're still not totally finished yet. That's because there's a cold front out to the west coming in from Alabama into northwest Georgia. And I know this doesn't look that impressive, but as the front comes in, there is still the chance for a few showers to develop along that. And we have some of those right now between Cedar Bluff and Fort Payne, Alabama, getting closer here to Catoosa County, or actually Chattooga County and also Floyd County. Uh, and so we'll just gonna be watching for a few of those showers to still come through. And as the front moves our way, we may see a few more showers developing, but we're not really concerned about a big time severe weather threat for the rest of the evening hours. In fact, let me show you the latest that we have here uh, that came into our area. This is from the Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma. Earlier, we were telling you how this uh, dark green color, the marginal risk, was over us here in Atlanta and North Georgia and over much of the metro area. Uh, but now uh, that severe weather risk is gone. The marginal risk is now up to the north. And then during the day tomorrow, that risk is going to be well off to the east as we start to dry out. So with the front coming into our area tonight, still the chance for a few showers around, but we're not really expecting anything to be severe as that comes in for tonight. Here's what we're watching with the temperatures. You know, we got up into the 80s today. Uh, then we fell into the 70s. We went back to the 80s before the sun went down. Now that the sun is down, we're back into the 70s again. Roman Dalton, though, you've been holding in the 80s for much of the evening hours. During the nighttime hours, you can see how our temperatures will hold in the 70s till around and after midnight. We'll see a few of those showers, we think, between 11 and 1 in the morning as that front moves through. And then in the morning, we start to cool off as that drier air comes in. We're back into the 60s, so that's going to be a nice, nicer way to start in the morning compared to the 70s, the muggy 70s that we've been dealing with a little drier tomorrow, getting up to 85 degrees, decreasing clouds, more sunshine around. Here's the depiction of the rain ahead of that front. Look behind the front, a northerly flow ahead of the front, a southerly flow, really warm and moist here. So as this sweeps through tonight, a few scattered showers developing along that front and then it falls apart as it moves to the east. Then that winds come out, that wind comes out of the north and west during the day tomorrow. That's the drier air that pushes our way and uh, pushes the rain out and gives us some lower relative humidity. So here's what we're watching with the seven day outlook. We're going to see uh, nicer conditions here over the next few days. Comfortable mornings for the weekend in the 60s with highs in the mid 80s. And then then on Sunday, a 20% chance for a shower with a few more clouds around. Then partly cloudy Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. High temperatures still in the mid, even some upper 80s. Stay with us. We have more to come on 11 Alive News Prime Time on the ATL. Where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Well, tonight the field is narrowing in Georgia's 7th Congressional District, which spans uh, Gwinnett County and Forsyth Counties. Democrats Carolyn Bordeaux and Brenda Lopez Romero heading to a runoff in August. On the Republican side of things, ER doctor and veteran and veteran Rich McCormick won outright to advance the races uh, to fill senator or fill the seat for Congressman Rob Woodall, who is now retiring. You know, problems with yesterday's primary voting combined with a continued push for police reform have led to another planned march on Georgia's capital. So Georgia's NAACP is uh, planning the march for 9 a.m. Monday to confront what is calling systemic criminal justice and electoral failures. Ron, the organizers say it's a reminder that the effort and the work towards justice and change has a long, long way to go for certain. And even as we talk about reform here this evening, new videos have emerged of black men dying during encounters with police. An arrest in Austin, Texas from March of 2019 shows Javier Ambler being handcuffed and tased after leading investigators on a car chase. Deputies started CPR when they noticed he was unconscious, but he later died. A grand jury could hear his case by this summer. In Washington, the family of Manuel Ellis is demanding an independent investigation of his death in March. The doorbell camera recorded him crying out for help while he was being restrained. During those encounters, both men told the arresting officers, I can't breathe. And those words, of course, have become a rallying cry now around the world. You know, calls to reform and even uh, take money away from local police departments because of these deaths have reached the Atlanta police headquarters, as you can see right there with the words defund the police painted right outside his headquarters last night. It has since been removed. But as 11 Alive investigative reporter Faith Bube tells us, a proposal in athens Clark County could put police funding up for a vote in a matter of days. Put the knife down! Put the knife down, please! No, 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 no. This July 1st shooting was one of five deadly police shootings in athens Clark County in 2019. I'm telling you to stop right now. Put, put it down, put it down, put it down. We just want to talk to you. Show me your hands. Investigations by the police department, the GBI, and the county DA concluded, while tragic and truly unfortunate, the taking of lives by officers in these circumstances were justified. Community resources. But athens Clark County Commissioner Mariah Parker says they also could have possibly been prevented. Serious reforms are necessary. Commissioner Parker has put together a four-page proposal to do just that, and the measure could be put up for a vote as soon as next Tuesday, June 16th. It would be part of the 2021 athens Clark County budget amendment. There's a variety of community response that we can implement 
in order to take the burden off our police department and ensure that people experiencing crisis um, get the help that they need. The plan includes decreasing the athens Clark County police force by 50% over the next 10 years, deauthorizing hiring for current vacant officer positions, and redirecting that money for mental health and social services instead. athens Clark County Police Chief Cleveland Spruill. So I think there's some room for us to look at uh, that, to even look at increasing the number of mental health clinicians and co-responder teams that we have, um, but I don't believe that that should be the, the dismantling or the, dis, uh, the um, downsizing of the police department. And the ACLU is supporting this proposal, urging the commissioners to pass this measure. Coming up tonight at 11, more from the police chief and whether the commissioners have the internal support they need to pass this reform proposal. Again, that's tonight at 11 on Up Late. All right, Faith, we'll see you very soon at 11. Coming up, our 11 Alive political experts weigh in on the claims of voter suppression happening in Georgia and the latest results still coming in tonight. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We're in a break right now from the rain. We've been enjoying a pretty nice evening out there with dry weather here in the metro area. We had showers and some storms earlier that have pushed off to the east, and those continue to move away tonight. They're clearing out from Lake Oconee area. We still have some showers around Lake Sinclair over toward Milledgeville. But here in Atlanta, we're, we're actually doing okay. Uh, it's still kind of muggy out there tonight as the cold front hasn't moved through our area yet. We had the showers here earlier. Those moved up toward the north and east. Now a few showers lingering in parts of Rabin County. Those are about to move into South Carolina. So is the rain over? Not totally. Uh, we still have a cold front that's out to the west. And I want you to see that's coming in here 
through northwest Georgia back into Alabama. And along that front, I know this isn't that impressive looking, but there are a few showers still developing along that front. And as the front continues to move toward the metro area and through the state of Georgia, it is possible that we're going to see a few of these showers like what are happening right now uh, over parts of north Georgia and back right on the line there between uh, Chattooga County and Floyd County and Alabama. We may see some of those showers develop here, but we don't think they'll turn severe. The Storm Prediction Center has taken us out of that marginal risk. It's just a few spotty showers that still might swing through our area tonight. Here's what we're watching out there. This is one of our model depictions. And again, this is showing it worse than what it really is. It's not showing it's showing a nice line that should be developing now, but that's not happening yet. We only have that little bit right there near Rome. So as this model or as this front comes in here, there is the chance that along that we'll have a few of these spotty showers. I think it'll be a broken line of just a few showers between now and midnight. Then after midnight that moves off to the east and then we see the rain move out and the drying out process begins with the relative humidity levels dropping and we're getting rid of all this muggy air. Stay with us. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. Chris, thanks a lot. Tonight, the results are still coming in from Georgia's biggest primary races, and we'll keep updating those numbers there at the bottom of your screen. But some breaking news we've been following for you tonight. AP is declaring John Ossoff the winner of the U.S. Senate Democratic race. John Ossoff quickly established himself as the clear leader. By the time 97% of the precincts had reported, he had secured 51% of the vote. Again, AP has now declared him the winner, and he does meet the requirements to avoid that primary runoff in August, so he'll challenge Republican incumbent David Perdue come November. Let's look at District 6 now. Karen Handel easily beat out her fellow Republicans for a chance to go up against Congresswoman Lucy McBath in November. This race will be a rematch of 2018. McBath challenged Handel for the seat, won that seat by 3,264 votes. A tight race, six district made up of Cobb, Fulton and DeKalb. In 2018, results showed it was rapidly shifting from Republican to Democrat. The strongest support for McBath came from North DeKalb, East Cobb supporting Karen Handel. Fulton County pretty much 50-50 split between the two candidates. And in the Fulton County District Attorney race, Fannie Willis is still ahead of Democratic incumbent Paul Howard right now. That race is likely headed to a runoff in August. Howard has held that position since 1997 when he became the first African American to be elected district attorney in the state of Georgia. Results come on the heels of voting issues statewide. Georgia's problems making national headlines, some even claiming voter suppression. Joining us now, Dr. Andra Gillespie of Emory University. Dr. Gillespie, thank you so much for being with us. We did want to get your thoughts on those claims first of voter suppression in Georgia's primary election. Well, there are some longstanding issues that were uh, reared their heads yesterday, compounded by other issues. So I wouldn't say that everything um, relates to voter suppression, though we understand why there are concerns about that. Now, I think probably one of the biggest cases to be made uh, for looking at voter suppression is the perpetual problem of why there are long lines in some districts, especially precincts that are majority minority. And so is there something systemic that causes election officials to routinely underestimate the number of voters who are going Going to turn out in black districts and thus giving them fewer workers and fewer uh, fewer voting machines. But there were so many other issues at play in this election. So for instance, if we think about the social distancing requirements, the extra cleaning requirements, if we think about the new voting machines um, and the fact that there were uh, election poll workers who canceled at the last minute, leaving the place understaffed, all of these things combined to create a perfect storm that actually made uh, things really inefficient in the precincts that were most adversely affected by this. Mike, last question for you. What do you think the chances are of Democrats actually flipping either of the U.S. Senate seats come November? Uh, I think their chances are very, very good, quite frankly. Uh, as a Republican, we've sort of uh, watched the demographic shift uh, to more Republican-leaning groups, in, not just in Metro Atlanta, um, county by county. Uh, we saw uh, Henry County, Rockdale County, DeKalb and Fulton a long time ago. Uh, I think this fall, they're just might be a possibility of either one or both of those Senate seats belonging in the Democrat column. 
All right, Mike Hassinger, Dr. Andre Gillespie, thank you so much for being with us. Remember to get the latest election results from the primary. You can text the word results to the number on your screen. It's 404-885-7600. You can also download our 11 Alive app to receive notifications. And as always, you can follow our 11 Alive live blog on the election to see the latest information, including the numerous reports about voting problems across Metro Atlanta. Again, you can look for that on 11alive.com. All right, thanks a lot, Jay Bale. Less than 24 hours after speaking at his brother's funeral, George Floyd's brother is asking the House Judiciary Committee hearing on police brutality to help stop the pain. He said he wanted to make sure his big brother George was not just another name on a list that keeps growing. And he called on lawmakers to reform police departments across our country and pleaded for them to make the violence stop. NBC's Alice Barr has more from Washington. In the U.S. Capitol today, as lawmakers search for a national strategy on police reform, the public outcry over the death of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police became deeply personal. I can't tell you the kind of pain you feel when you watch something like that. When you watch your big brother who you looked up to your whole entire life, die, die begging for his mom. Phil and East Floyd speaking a day after laying his older brother to rest and after two weeks of passionate nationwide protests, today pleading with lawmakers to stop the pain. If his death ends up changing the world for the better, and I think it will, then he died as he lived. It is on you to make sure his death is not in vain. Leaders in both parties acknowledging the need for change, though Republicans firmly denounced growing calls to defund or disband police departments. The vast, vast majority of law enforcement officers are responsible, hardworking, heroic first responders. Some Democrats trying to turn the conversation from defunding to rethinking public safety to address root problems. Police officers complain all the time. They're not social workers. That's right. Democrats already unveiled a proposal including bans on chokeholds and no-knock warrants and a national database to track police misconduct. Under increasing pressure to respond, President Trump is now expected to publicly address policing reforms tomorrow during a visit to Dallas. You know, I had a flight to Tokyo coming up next month, and then the Olympics got rescheduled, and we've all been wondering what will the new Olympics in 2021 in Tokyo look like? Well, today the organizers gave us a first peek of it. What they say is it's going to be different. It's going to be a simplified version of what has long been the biggest sporting event in the world. The games were originally planned for July in 2020, postponed, of course, because of COVID-19. Today, organizers said the Olympics will not be done with such grand splendor, but they didn't provide specifics about how they might modify events or deal with crowds or will they have empty venues. They didn't talk about yet when that will all be decided, but again, say it will be simpler. Since the postponement was announced, organizers have been looking for ways to reduce costs and really streamline the Olympic Games. All right, Cheryl, you know, today, Major League Soccer officially announcing its return to, uh, to games with the MLS is they're calling it the MLS is back tournament. Now this is a World Cup style event to be held at Disney Orlando. All 26 teams will train and report to Disney for the tournament, which is going to start on July 8th. There will be three regular season games, then a knockout stage that will lead to the championship on August 11th. Every game will be nationally televised after the tournament. There will there are still a lot of questions about how and when the regular season will begin, but the commissioner Don Garber wanted the league to return as soon as possible. Getting out early is important, and it's not necessarily getting out first because you got to get it right. Uh, but getting out there and ensuring that we had the certainty to play games is crucial to the future success of the league. Uh, without the concept of a tournament, we'd still be sitting here waiting. Negotiations were contentious and players were concerned about their health. There will be testing every other day but not for staff who will not be directly in contact with the players like Disney workers and, and drivers. So there's still a threat of getting sick, but Atlanta goalkeeper Brad Guzan says they just have to stay focused. You have to be able to put it to the side. Uh, as difficult as it is, um, you know, we, we, 
we understand uh, our job is to go and play games. Um, and Orlando was voted on, it was passed, and now we have to go out and perform. Coming up, the Trump administration opposed to extending the extra $600 for unemployment due to coronavirus when the benefit is set to end next. Weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear, on 11 Alive News Primetime. We've heard a lot of reasons for why things didn't go as planned for Georgia's primary election day, but what impact did it have on voters? Investigator Rebecca Lindstrom looked through many complaints and researched them to give us a better understanding of what voters really experienced. On election day, we received complaints about 71 different polling locations in the Metro's four most populated counties. Viewers in Fulton and Gwinnett had the most to say, with 24 complaints in each of those counties. But with Fulton and DeKalb now under state investigation, we know there are more. In Gwinnett, the main complaint was a big one, missing equipment at voting stations. We're talking about voting machines, printers, and scanners, the essentials needed to place a vote. In Fulton, the equipment was there, but voters say it just wasn't working. Whether it was a lack of training or broken machines, voters at more than a dozen locations had to use paper ballots. It was the same in DeKalb, where provisional ballots were in short supply. Locations didn't anticipate needing them for every voter, so some precincts only had a few dozen on hand. And in Cobb, four people reached out to us upset that precincts either opened late 
or didn't have enough equipment or staff, creating wait times of up to five hours. We asked Dr. Andre Gillespie, a professor of political science at Emory University, for her take on it all. I think the best approach is to figure out how to address the logistical and the tactical problems so that in November, nobody is accusing you of actually being sloppy to the point that it might actually discourage certain people from voting. There is concern some of these problems may have intentionally targeted the black community. Of the 71 complaints we've received so far, about a third are from precincts that are in zip codes with a higher than average black population. I'm not willing to say yet that this was um, sort of politically motivated to do a bad job at execution, but if it happens again, it looks like that there's a certain uh, level of callous indifference that could actually end up being really harmful to one's ability to be able to exercise their franchise. We have reached out to county boards to get a better picture of the problems and just who was most impacted. Rebecca, thank you. 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. We do want to hear from you. We've heard from so many of you already. Thank you if you have already shared your voter experience. If you haven't and you had problems yesterday, email us at where Atlanta speaks at 11alive.com or give us a call 678 765 9514. Leave us a voicemail, include your name and where you voted, and we may use your messages on the air. We continue to watch a few showers that are developing along with the cold front that is over to the west of us. It's not that impressive right now. Really, the rain that we had earlier was a lot more impressive than what's coming through still later on tonight. We're dry right now. Here's a look at some of the showers that have pushed off to the east out I-20. They're getting closer to Augusta and moving into South Carolina. We're dry right now. The showers that came through our area earlier have moved up into northeast Georgia. They're exiting Raven County right now, but we're still not quite finished with the rain yet. That is because the cold front hasn't even moved through yet, and we're watching some showers that are developing along that front, and the front is right up here into North Alabama coming into northwest Georgia, and along that front, we have a few showers that are beginning to develop. These that are coming in to parts of Chattooga County, pushing in to parts of Floyd County, that's just north and west of the Rome area, and then we have some additional showers up here in Whitfield County that has some thunder and lightning with them, so this is the actual front that is pushing our way and we're seeing just a few of those showers developing along it, but we don't think we're going to have a lot of rain coming in tonight, but still it's just a chance for a few additional showers that will come in tonight. In fact, take a look at this on the bigger picture and you can see what we're watching with that storm risk. Earlier we were telling you about being in the dark green color or the marginal risk, which is the level one of five risk for severe storms. Well, that's now moved up to the north, so we're not really concerned about a severe weather risk with us tonight, but just a few scattered showers that still have the chance to develop along with that front. Now, you know, we've been dealing with a very tropical air mass. It's just been muggy and humid here and really muggy mornings with temperatures in the 70s. And that's because we had a lot of tropical air and very moist. When you see the yellows and oranges, that just shows that there's a lot more moisture content in the air. But look what happens as that front comes through. It pushes all that moisture out of here. It'll still be tropical moisture here along the Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina coast, but the blue colors indicate the drier air. That's gonna start filtering in tonight and will be with us tomorrow pushing the rain out of here and and that will keep our relative humidity levels on the low end for Thursday also into Friday Saturday looking dry on Sunday a little more moisture a little more humidity coming in here we are going back to a 20% chance for some isolated showers on Sunday but I really think most of us will stay dry and then another surge of dry air for Monday and also into Tuesday so things looking pretty good so these dew points that have been in the 70s and that oppressive feel to the air those dew points are falling and that's indicating the drier air that's moving our way so that's something to celebrate and I think we deserve it after this soggy pattern that we've been in decreasing clouds tomorrow a high of 85 and then a comfortable mornings Friday and Saturday with lows in the 60s highs in the mid 80s and there's just that 20% chance for a shower on Sunday I really think most of us will stay dry and then partly cloudy Monday Tuesday and Wednesday with high temperatures still uh, not too bad mid 80s even some upper 80s in some spots Chris thanks the Trump administration says it is against extending the federal unemployment benefit program beyond July. The weekly $600 payment is in addition to the normal unemployment benefits in response to COVID-19's pandemic. Democrats have pushed a plan that would extend the benefits through January. Right now, they are set to end 
on July 31st. There are a lot of coronavirus rumors on social media as we speak. One viral post is claiming wearing masks can actually weaken your immune system. But is that really true? A verified team out of D.C. is fact-checking that claim. The goal of the Verify team is to separate fact from fiction, and there's a lot of misinformation to avoid when it comes to the coronavirus. Including claims like this, shared thousands of times, saying wearing a mask will weaken your immune system and lead you to getting sick. So let's verify, does wearing a mask weaken your immune system? Our top sources are the CDC, the Mayo Clinic, and Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. We know one of the main reasons the CDC has recommended everyone wear masks is because of asymptomatic cases. Even if you don't think you're sick and aren't showing symptoms, health experts say wearing a mask is an important tool against COVID-19. Importantly, I think what people don't fully appreciate is that putting a mask on yourself is more to prevent you from infecting someone else. And if everybody does that, we're each protecting each other. After initially saying only healthcare workers and those who are sick should wear masks, the CDC revised their guidelines, saying they should be worn in community settings while also staying six feet apart from others. The Mayo Clinic also advises similarly, saying routinely washing your hands, avoid touching your face, and properly maintain whatever mask you're wearing. Neither mentions anything about a reduced ability to fight other infection. Those supporting this claim say because the mask keeps you from being exposed to things like bacteria, that will weaken your immune system. But experts say, remember, that bacteria comes from food, water, and our environment everywhere. Millions of microbes will still get into our systems one way or the other meaning our immune systems are constantly operating with or without a mask. So we can verify, no, research does not support the idea that wearing a mask will weaken your immune system and make you more vulnerable to the coronavirus. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station.
today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of... Okay, we're going to see you on Up Late at 11 on our sister station on 11 Alive. More news coming up. Are you tired of not getting the help you need on your injury case? Don't know how much your case is worth or when it will settle? These are reasons we hear from thousands of clients that choose us to handle their injury claim. Don't take our word for it. Listen to what our clients have to say in thousands of five-star reviews. Call, text, or email now for free to find out what your case is really worth. Munging and Associates, The Hammer, 678 Injured, Shop for Stella Rosa Wines at your nearest retailer. Find our three new flavors, blueberry, pineapple, and watermelon. Made with real fruit, these wines are low-calorie and best served chill. Text SHOP to 41400 to find Stella Rosa Wines near you. What is that? Uh, mine. Why? It's just that it's... Lavender? Yes, it is. Old Spice. It's for men. But I like the smell of it. <laughs> Life's full of little accidents. And the Hyundai Tucson helps make sure they stay little by alerting you if you drift out of your lane and even gently correcting your steering. Because unlike your favorite shirt, you are irreplaceable. Hyundai, the longer you look, the more there is to like. Get 0% APR for 72 months, plus no payments for 90 days, or $27.50 cash back on the Tucson. Visit buyhyundai.com. This is a mother that won't hassle you about grandkids. The new Mother Cruncher Chicken Sandwich from Checkers. Crispy, crunchy white meat with all the mother-loving fixings or the tangy bacon barbecue. Checkers Mother Cruncher Chicken Sandwiches, starting at $3.99. Get Checkers delivered. This is the kind of card that has America talking. With it, people with Medicare are getting all-in-one coverage for their doctor visits, hospital care, prescription drugs, and more. This kind of insurance, called Medicare Part C, may also cover dental care, eyeglasses, hearing aids, fitness programs, vitamins, even healthy meals and rides to the doctor. With this kind of coverage, you do not need a Medicare supplement insurance plan. You will access your benefits through your Medicare Part C plan for one low and oftentimes $0 monthly plan premium. You deserve to get the most from your Medicare benefits. Call now for free information that may help you get more coverage for less money. There is no obligation to enroll. Whether for yourself or someone you love, call the number on the screen now. Call now. The Chicken Slinger for just $2.49, only at Sonic. Please. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Georgia under a national microscope after a messy primary election day. Tonight at 10, the calls for voting solutions before the presidential election in November. And two more APD officers have been fired in connection to two ca uh, a case uh, involving two college students who were tased. Why the police union believes the move violates due process. Plus, 21 states are reporting a sudden spike in COVID-19 cases. A warning from doctors who are urging people not to let their guard down. We begin tonight, though, with breaking news. Both U.S. Senate races in Georgia are now set for November. John Ossoff has won the Democratic Party primary outright. The Associated Press made the call around 8.30 tonight. Ossoff defeated three Democratic challengers and will avoid a runoff in August. With 97% of the precincts reporting, Ossoff has a 51% share of the vote. You might remember Ossoff lost to Karen Handel in a congressional race in 2016, so now he'll have another shot at getting back to Washington. He'll take on Republican incumbent Senator David Perdue in the November general election. This race will get a lot of attention nationally in the next few months as Democrats hope to win back the Senate majority and they will target this race as a possible flip. 
Well, it has been nearly 24 hours since Georgia became the national poster child for election problems. Problems that forced countless thousands of voters to wait in lines, in some cases until the midnight hours to cast their ballots. And tonight there are calls for cooperation, solutions and investigations to make sure the next big election, the one coming up in November, goes smoothly. Here's John Sherrick now with what's next. Voters who started lining up to vote before 7 a.m. in DeKalb County were still lining up at midnight Tuesday, many leaving without voting. DeKalb CEO Michael Thurman says now about all the problems, never again. If people were forced to walk away from the polling place but were not able to vote, then their vote was suppressed. Michael Thurman and Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger were blaming each other. Was it the county's fault or the state's fault? But enough, Thurman says now. Now he hopes to meet with Raffensperger in the next couple of days to work out how the two of them can work together to repair the voting process before November for the voters. We have to move beyond a finger pointing and partisan politics and put the best interests of the voters first. We were unable to reach Raffensperger, but Wednesday night he emailed us insisting the counties are legally responsible to conduct elections, so they are to blame for Tuesday's problems. He says he will now ask the state legislature to give him the power to intervene and look into failing county elections offices when it is clear there are continued failures. State and county investigations into Tuesday's voting mess will soon get underway. And the clock is ticking. The runoff is August 11th, and early voting for the November elections begins just four months from now. All right, John Shear reporting from the state capitol. And now in the 13th district, Democratic Congressman David Scott has made a late push to avoid a runoff. He's now at 50% plus one with just 10 precincts left to report. Now earlier, the AP projected a likely runoff. This one too close to call right now. Want well, to get the latest election results? All you have to do is text the word results to 404-885-7600, or you can also download our Love It Alive app. Georgia voting problems have drawn criticism from all over the country. There are questions now about whether what happened amounts to voter suppression. Hillary Clinton tweeted out the front page of the AJC and wrote, what happened in Georgia yesterday was by design. Voter suppression is a threat to our democracy. Former Georgia gubernatorial candidate and voting rights activist Stacey Abrams agrees. Thousands of requests for absentee ballots were not returned, and we know that this was a preventable problem if we had done the work, if the Secretary of State and his office had held to their responsibility. The ACLU of Georgia called the election a complete failure and says it is exploring all legal options on how to respond. Well, today, both the Atlanta and Gwinnett County chapters of the NAACP held a press conference addressing voter issues among minorities in Gwinnett County. And what we saw was that the uh, inequality of distrib distribution of equipment in the um, African American communities. We had lines, we had uh, equipment that was not delivered on time, we had managers who did not know what they were supposed to do. We reached out to the Secretary of State's office and Fulton County about the allegations. We'll let you know when we get a response. Well, Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb tracking some scattered showers and potential storms later tonight, Chris. Well, we've got a cold front that's moving our way. We've already had one round of showers that moved through. Those have pushed off to the east. You can see them exiting away from Lake Oconee right now, moving over toward the Augusta area. In Atlanta, we've been dry for a little while. The showers that came through our area earlier moved up toward the north and east. Still just a couple lingering showers in Raven County that are moving out. But now we're watching still the potential for a few additional scattered showers. The cold front is still out to the west and it's moving into northwest Georgia right now. And along that front, we have a few showers that are developing. Some of these north of Rome and Floyd County right there on the uh, Chattooga County line. Also some showers up in north Georgia uh, as you go into Whitfield County and Murray County. And that's really all that's developing right now along that front. But it is still possible tonight as that front sweeps through that we still might have a couple of spotty showers. Let me show you what we're watching as you go to bed tonight and as we're sleeping. This is one of our future radar products and what it's showing right now 
is overdoing it a little bit. We don't have this much rain that's developing along that front, but as it comes through, this just goes to show us the potential of what we could see a broken line of just a few scattered showers. This is how it would look possibly around midnight tonight, moving through the area and then falling apart as they move over to the east and move out of here. That's going to be the last batch of rain that comes in, and we're not really concerned about severe weather with this. I don't think we'll kick up any strong storms with it. In fact, the Storm Prediction Center has taken us out of that marginal risk or the level one risk for severe storms. We'll talk more about that for you and let you know about with this being the last batch of rain, how we're going to dry out. And that means the humidity levels lowering too. We'll let you know if that'll linger into the weekend coming up. Two more Atlanta police officers fired. The move comes 10 days after two college students were pulled from their car and tased right in front of our cameras. This now makes four officers total dismissed following the incident. Hope Ford is now live from Centennial Olympic Park with reaction from the police union and the student's attorney. Hope. Yeah, well, the police union tells me the officers were dismissed for use of excessive force. Now, the student's attorney called the firing encouraging, but the police union thinks this is a violation of due process. What's the hurry to fire these two officers and for what reason? That's an administrative issue, not a criminal issue. Ivory Streeter and Mark Gardner were fired the day after two students were tased and arrested. Armand Jones and Lonnie Hood were let go 10 days later. Vince Champion with the International Brotherhood of Police Union says the four officers were fired too quickly because of the current climate and protests. Where was the investigation? If you want to get a pound of flesh, I guess, put them on administrative leave without pay. They have that ability. APD Police Chief Erica Shield says the body camera video played a huge part in her decision. I knew that I had only one option, and that is to terminate the employees. An attorney representing the students, Messiah Young and Tania Pilgrim, sent me this statement, reading in part, we are pleased that two additional officers have been fired over their involvement in the horrendous case of police brutality. It is encouraging that Mayor Lance Bottoms is making every effort to right a wrong. The four officers who were fired, along with two others, were also criminally charged by DA Paul Howard. When asked if Champion believes APD will fire the two remaining officers charged, in the case. I'm sure that is on their mind. And Champion says that they aren't getting any information from APD, and he believes the firings and the charges are a political move. Hope the two officers who were fired first filed a suit against Chief Erica Shields and Mayor Bottoms to get their job backs. Is there any information on if these other officers that have been fired will do the same thing? Well, I did ask Champion that, and he says right now they're trying to focus on the criminal case, so he's not sure if right now those two officers will follow suit. All right, Hope, thank you. We now know the names of the two men killed after a bar fight in Gwinnett County. Raul Rodriguez Hernandez and Jose Lopez Diaz were uh, run over by a truck in the parking lot of the Corona Billiards near Norcross yesterday. A third man was hit but survived. The driver, Jose Basulto, remains in jail facing several charges. So to come for you tonight, why the country's top infectious disease expert says the coronavirus pandemic has turned out to be his worst nightmare. And growing concerns as COVID-19 cases are on the rise in 21 states. What public health experts say is causing the surges. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks.
Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. The country's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, says the coronavirus turned out to be his worst nightmare, and he says the pandemic is far from over. Speaking at the Bio International Convention webinar Tuesday, Dr. Fauci said scientists are also at the very beginning of understanding how COVID-19 works. Like, oh my goodness, when is it going to end? It really is very complicated. So we're, we're just at almost the beginning of really understanding it. He pointed to one of the unknowns being long term effects of the disease, even after patients initially recover. Every state in the country reopening in some capacity at the same time when many are experiencing an increase in number of COVID-19 cases. As NBC's Wendy Wolf Oak explains, health experts are warning everyone not to let down their guard. With more people out of their homes. This is a new thing, a new way of life for everyone. Inevitably, there will also be more cases of COVID-19. Reopen, reopen, reopen. Be careful, be careful, be careful. A delicate balance to strike for everyone to move forward. Recovery is going to be very complicated. Uh, we are trying to do the step-by-step -step approach depending on the context of the area. Black lives matter! Another complication, the protests that started in Minneapolis amidst the ongoing global pandemic. Health officials urging all who participated to be tested. The test was really quick, and now I'm on my way home to tell my wife that, you know, it's done. Across the country, 21 states have now seen an increase in cases. Arizona lifted its stay at home orders on May 15th. The state has seen a 40% increase in the cases since last week, and eight out of every 10 hospital beds in use. Another example why healthcare experts warn now is not the time to relax social distancing protocols. The bottom line is all the scientific evidence we have right now is pretty clear uh, that people without symptoms who are infected can and do spread the disease. So that's why you got to wear a mask and you got to keep that physical distance. Advice for the entire nation managing the reopening and resurgence in a COVID-19 world. Today, DeKalb County expanded its COVID-19 testing to address the high number of cases there. Another testing site is now open at the Salem Bible Church in Stonecrest. Right now, the county has the third highest number of cases in the state behind Fulton and Gwinnett counties. As of today, they have nearly 4,200 cases. There are now five different places to get tested in DeKalb County. More than three quarters of Atlanta business owners and executives want the economy to reopen in phases. The Business Journal surveyed more than 200 business leaders. 78% in the Atlanta market think the economy should phase itself back in. That's 1% less than the national average. But researchers say the survey's timing could affect results. That's because the reopening of Georgia's economy predates this survey. All right, let's switch gears and turn our attention to the weather now. Chris, we saw several rounds of heavy rain today. Could we see some more of that overnight? It, we're starting to see a little bit more of that developing in northwest Georgia along with the cold front. I'm going to show you those showers a little closer in just a second. Meanwhile, we're in a dry pattern right now that's going to last for a little bit before this broken line moves in later on in just a little while. You, there's that first round that came through earlier that's over to the east of us. We're dry in Atlanta right now. And in, in fact, the showers that we had that moved through Atlanta over on the west side and then on the north side, those moved up 85 and 985 into northeast Georgia. They're now exiting Raven County. But this is the part that we're watching now that is going to be a little bit more shower activity redeveloping ahead of the actual cold front that's moving in. Those showers that came through earlier were well ahead of the cold front. Now the front is right out here sweeping into northwest Georgia and it's kicking up some showers in Floyd County, also right there in parts of Chattooga County. Some of these moderate showers are around our Murchie right now, just north of Rome. That's going to move over into Gordon County, crossing over 75 around the Calhoun area at Daresville. You'll get in on a little bit of this as it moves through. Also some additional showers up into parts of northern Murray County, north of Chatsworth, up into 
Francisco, moving up into parts of Tennessee. Some of those will approach Fannin County and Gilmer County. So as you can see, this isn't really that impressive, but this is the front and you can actually see some of these showers developing there to the east of Birmingham too. So as the front comes through tonight, we may see just a few showers still developing, but we don't really expect anything severe. Take a look right now at the bigger picture and you can see here. Uh, this is a live look in Rome and I mentioned those showers that are north of Rome. The downtown area is still dry. Those showers are more to the north of you near Armerchi as we were pointing that out in the northern parts of Floyd County. Over the next 12 hours, as that area of rain gets closer to us and develops just a little bit more, it's going to give us just a few showers here. We think between 11 and 1 o'clock here in Metro Atlanta. It could have a couple rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning with it, but we don't expect it to be severe. And then once that moves over to the east and the cold front pushes away, that's going to get the rain out of here. And then that opens the door to the drier air coming in from the northwest and that northwest flow coming in here. And then our temperatures go down to about 68 degrees. Now I know that's not cold or anything, but we've been waking up the past few mornings with very muggy conditions in the lower 70s around 72 and 73 degrees. So 68 is going to feel pretty good with that drier air that's pushing into our area. Then we get up to 85 in the afternoon. Yeah, it's still going to be warm, but with the humidity levels a little bit lower, it's just not going to feel as sticky or as muggy out there. We're going to go with a nine on the wasometer as things are improving, clouds decreasing during the day, a little breeze at times. So there's the rain that came through earlier. We're in a break now. This is what I'm talking about with that front coming in and just a few showers developing along the front. Ahead of it, the, the uh, flow is southerly, really warm, still some of that tropical air over us. And then behind the front, you can see how the wind is then going to be coming out of the north and west. So during the nighttime hours, here comes that broken line of just a few scattered showers. We don't think it's going to be severe by tomorrow morning. That's going to be well off to the east of us. But here's the thing that's going to make the big changes in our weather tomorrow. That northwest flow coming in here, pushing the rain out of here and then ushering in that drier air. And that's going to allow the relative humidity to drop. It's not going to be as humid. It's not going to be as muggy. A temperature around the mid 80s tomorrow is actually going to feel like the mid 80s instead of a heat index going into the lower 90s. Friday, Saturday morning, we're going to start off with comfortable temperatures in the mid 60s with highs in the mid 80s. On Sunday, a little more moisture comes in. I had to introduce a 20% chance for a shower Sunday, but I really think most of us will stay dry. And then Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, partly cloudy skies with lows in the 60s highs in the mid and some upper 80s in some areas. Take a look at your weather wow moment for the day. Uh, this is just a beautiful shot that was uh, captured yesterday by Scott Anna in Union County up in North Georgia. When some of the storms are moving through, he captured that vivid lightning. Looks great, Scott. Thanks for sharing that with us. We would love to see your weather wow moments, and a lot of times we get these from our 11 Alive Community Storm Trackers. If you want to be a part of that group on our Facebook or on Facebook, just search 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Ask to become a member of that group that comes up there, and we'll let you in. And then you can also uh, read all about weather happening in the area, and you can submit your information, pictures, and videos too. A viral post claims wearing a face mask does more harm than good because they ultimately weaken your immune system. But is that true? Our Verify team is checking it out for you next. The Live's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. 
clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. There are a lot of coronavirus rumors out there on social media, and one viral post claims wearing masks can weaken your immune system. But is that really true? Our verified team in D.C. is fact-checking that claim. The goal of the verified team is to separate fact from fiction, and there's a lot of misinformation to avoid when it comes to the coronavirus, including claims like this shared thousands of times saying wearing a mask will weaken your immune system and lead you to getting sick. So let's verify, does wearing a mask weaken your immune system? Our top sources are the CDC, the Mayo Clinic, and Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. We know one of the main reasons the CDC has recommended everyone wear masks is because of asymptomatic cases. Even if you don't think you're sick and aren't showing symptoms, health experts say wearing a mask is an important tool against COVID-19. Importantly, I think what people don't fully appreciate is that putting a mask on yourself is more to prevent you from infecting someone else. And if everybody does that, we're each protecting each other. After initially saying only healthcare workers and those who are sick should wear masks, the CDC revised their guidelines, saying they should be worn in community settings while also staying six feet apart from others. The Mayo Clinic also advises similarly, saying routinely washing your hands, avoid touching your face, and properly maintain whatever mask you're wearing. Neither mentions anything about a reduced ability to fight other infection. Those supporting this claim say because the mask keeps you from being exposed to things like bacteria, that will weaken your immune system. But experts say, remember, that bacteria comes from food, water, and our environment everywhere. Millions of microbes will still get into our systems one way or the other meaning our immune systems are constantly operating with or without a mask. So we can verify, no, research does not support the idea that wearing a mask will weaken your immune system and make you more vulnerable to the coronavirus. Well, if you have something you'd like us to verify, all you have to do is send it to the addresses there on your screen. You can use Twitter, Facebook, or verify at 11alive.com. George Floyd's brother testifies before a House committee on police brutality just one day after his brother is buried. We have the latest from Washington ahead. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. 
Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Both U.S. Senate races in Georgia are now set for November. John Ossoff has won the Democratic Party primary tonight outright. The Associated Press made that call around 8.30. Now, Ossoff defeated three Democratic challengers and will avoid a runoff in August. With 97% of the precincts reporting, he has 51% of the vote. Now, you might remember Ossoff lost to Karen Handel in a congressional race in 2016, so now he will have another shot at getting to Washington. He will now take on Republican incumbent Senator David Perdue in the November general election. This race likely to get a whole lot of attention nationally in the next few months as Democrats who hope to win back the Senate will target this race as a possible flip. Well, Hispanics and Latinos are expected to play a large role in this year's presidential election. The Pew Research Center found that 32 million Latinos are eligible to vote nationwide in the 2020 presidential election. That's 2 million more than black voters. Our Elwin Lopez has a look at how that impacts Georgia. Right now, today, Latinos have the power to determine the outcome of statewide competitive elections, and that's what's making Georgia a swing state for this presidential election cycle. For the first time, Latinos are on track to be the largest share of non-white voters in 2020. That's according to the Pew Research Center. Latinos and African Americans are paying attention to the issues, are paying attention to the elections, and do want to exercise their right to vote to ensure that we have elected officials that reflect our values. Jerry Gonzalez, executive director of the Georgia Association of Latino Elected Officials, says voting should be more accessible to all. He says during this economic recession, essential workers of minority communities are moving more to provide for their families. Gonzalez says same-day voter registration, which is done in other states, would enable Georgia voters to register and vote at the same time, making it easier for those communities. With people moving quite a bit, uh, it's important to have same-day voter registration so that way people will be able to update their address of where they're voting. He says allowing voters to cast their ballot at a precinct near them instead of where they previously lived. So many states have same day voter registration. Georgia should move in that direction too. Citing the issues at the polls on Tuesday, Gonzalez says every single voter needs to do everything in their power to make sure their vote is counted. Not just this election, but the one in August, the one in November, and the one in January. 
Well, people who had trouble voting yesterday may have been asked to fill out a provisional ballot. Well, the Secretary of State's office says they were used when the voting machines were unavailable and the ballots were automatically counted. But if you want to check out the status of your ballot, you have a couple of options here. One way is to log on to the My Voter page on the Secretary of State's website. There you can find your provisional status or your provisional ballot status. You can also call your local election office. You can find those numbers on 11alive.com. Less than 24 hours after speaking at his brother George Floyd's funeral, Thelonious Floyd asked a House Judiciary hearing uh, to help in police brutality. He says uh, to help stop the pain. He said he wanted to make sure his big brother wasn't just another name on a list that keeps growing. He called on lawmakers to reform police departments across the country and pleaded for them to make the violence stop. NBC's Alice Barr has more from Washington. In the U.S. Capitol today, as lawmakers search for a national strategy on police reform, the public outcry over the death of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police became deeply personal. I can't tell you the kind of pain you feel when you watch something like that. When you watch your big brother, who you looked up to your whole entire life, die, die begging for his mom. Philanise Floyd speaking a day after laying his older brother to rest and after two weeks of passionate nationwide protests, today pleading with lawmakers to stop the pain. If his death ends up changing the world for the better, and I think it will, then he died as he lived. It is on you to make sure his death is not in vain. Leaders in both parties acknowledging the need for change, though Republicans firmly denounced growing calls to defund or disband police departments. The vast, vast majority of law enforcement officers are responsible, hardworking, heroic first responders. Some Democrats trying to turn the conversation from defunding to rethinking public safety to address root problems. Police officers complain all the time. They're not social workers. That's right. Democrats already unveiled a proposal including bans on chokeholds and no-knock warrants and a national database to track police misconduct. Under increasing pressure to respond, President Trump is now expected to publicly address policing reforms tomorrow during a visit to Dallas. Calls to reform and even take money away from local police departments as a result of Floyd's death and others have reached the Atlanta police headquarters with the words defund the police painted right outside last night. That paint has since been removed, but as 11 Alive investigator Faith Abube reports, a proposal in athens Clark County could put police funding up for a vote in a matter of days. Put the knife down! Put the knife down, please! No, 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 no. This July 1st shooting was one of five deadly police shootings in athens Clark County in 2019. I'm telling you to stop right now. Put, the, put it down. Put it down. Put it down. We just want to talk to you. Show me your hand. Investigations by the police department, the GBI, and the county DA concluded, while tragic and truly unfortunate, the taking of lives by officers in these circumstances were justified. Community resources. But athens Clark County Commissioner Mariah Parker says they also could have possibly been prevented. Serious reforms are necessary. Commissioner Parker has put together a four-page proposal to do just that, and the measure could be put up for a vote as soon as next Tuesday, June 16th. It would be part of the 2021 athens Clark County budget amendment. There's a variety of community response that we can implement in order to take the burden off our police department and ensure that people experiencing crisis um, get the help that they need. The plan includes decreasing the athens Clark County police force by 50% over the next 10 years, deauthorizing hiring for current vacant officer positions, and redirecting that money for mental health and social services instead. athens Clark County Police Chief Cleveland Spruill. So I think there's some room for us to look at uh, that, to even look at increasing the number of mental health clinicians and co-responder teams that we have, um, but I don't believe that that should be the, the dismantling or the, dis, uh, the um, downsizing of the police department. And the ACLU is supporting this proposal, urging the commissioners to pass this measure. Coming up tonight at 11, more from the police chief and whether the commissioners have the internal support they need to pass this reform proposal. Again, that's tonight at 11 on Uplate.
New research shows widespread use of face masks could prevent a second wave of the coronavirus. British researchers used modeling data to study the effects of using face masks. They found that wearing the masks in public was twice as effective as lowering the risk of spreading the virus. Their data shows that routine face mask use by at least half the population could reduce the spread as well. Well, if you've been to the store or ordered groceries, you've probably seen the prices heading up. It's happening at a time when many families have even tighter budgets. So here's some examples for you. The price of orange juice is up by 15% in New York. In Boston, the price of eggs is up by nearly 25%. This is according to Nielsen data obtained by NBC. You can also expect to see prices go up at restaurants as they begin to open back up. That's because of higher food prices and the fact that owners are spending more on safety equipment. AMC Entertainment planning to have its theaters fully open all across the world by July. The reopening would be in time for new releases such as Tenet and Disney's much anticipated live action version of Mulan. Earlier this month, AMC reported it may not survive the pandemic. The company said it lost $2.2 billion in the first quarter of this year. Our weekly visit with humorist Ron Hart touches on COVID-19 and pets as well as the lack of social distancing during protests. And as we like to point out, these opinions are Ron's and Ron's own. He spoke with our Jeff Hellinger earlier. We are in the second week of nationwide protests following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Two big moments in the country are now head to head and even overlapping the COVID-19 pandemic and the protests against racism, institutionalized racism in the United States, most notably with law enforcement in minority communities. Joining me now is national columnist Ron Hart. Ron, we are still in a pandemic here, but there is not a lot of social distancing going on in the protests. Uh, it certainly has a different look, at least the public face of COVID today as opposed to a month ago. Yeah, it appears that social justice trumps social distancing, right? So uh, I think the COVID thing got milked a little further, a little longer than it should have been. And all the attention now has been drawn toward the uh, to the riots, the looting, and, uh, and, and the social justice type of things. The World Health Organization and scientists have said from the very beginning animals could get COVID and now they come back and say that's not possible. We continue to get so much conflicting information about this pandemic, whether it's going to a Kroger or a Publix, is there COVID potentially on the bags? Is it on the shelves? Is it on the meat packages? You know, the, yeah. the responses to this, the answers to this are, are absolutely all over the place. It's been maddening because we, we understand the health organizations don't know, right? So you're supposed to wear masks, you're not supposed to wear masks. The World Health Organization, who? said dogs could get it, a lion got it one time, now they say dogs can't get it, so you don't have to quarantine your dog. So I guess you can say, uh, who let the dogs out? You could say that, but uh, I would not say that. You would say that, woof, woof, thank you, sir. <laughs> The George Floyd case is drawing renewed attention to other deadly encounters with police. Next, new videos that are sparking outrage across the country. We are keeping our eye on the cold front that's moving our way tonight. We already had one round of showers move through. We're dry now, but now we're seeing along that front a few more showers developing along that with some heavier rain and even some thunder and lightning. Stay with us. We'll let you know what to expect as that sweeps through Atlanta in just a little while. Coming up, meet the Braves' newest draft pick. Plus, the Georgia Bulldog goes in the top 10. MLB draft coverage is next in sports. System. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 1101 Live News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. 
For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11. The George Floyd case is drawing renewed attention to other deadly encounters with police that have been recorded on cell phones or other security cameras. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez takes a look at several newly released videos in a warning some of these images are difficult to watch. This morning, several newly released videos of black men dying during encounters with police are sparking more outrage. In Austin, Texas, our affiliate KXAN obtained police body camera footage from an arrest in March 2019. The incident was filmed but never aired by the reality show Live PD. Investigators say 40-year-old Javier Ambler led sheriff's deputies on a 22-minute car chase. While being handcuffed and tasered, he's heard saying, I can't breathe, multiple times. When officers notice he's unresponsive, they begin performing CPR. Ambler later died. An internal affairs review concluded the deputies followed guidelines, but an investigation is underway, and a grand jury could hear the case by this summer. Ambler's father can't bring himself to watch the video. I miss him really, really bad, sir. And I love him. I'll give my life in return for my son to be here. In Tacoma, Washington, the family of Manuel Ellis is demanding an independent investigation of his death in March after this doorbell camera showed him repeatedly crying out while being restrained. I can't breathe, sir. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. From New York to Minnesota to Texas to Washington, to too many points in between. NBC News does not know what occurred before the video, but Tacoma police allege Ellis assaulted an officer that night. The police union says this is not the time to sacrifice dedicated public servants at the altar of public sentiment. The mayor of Tacoma now calling on all four officers involved to be fired. In New Jersey, the state's attorney general says this dash cam video shows 28-year-old Maurice Gordon being pulled over for allegedly driving 110 miles per hour last month. 
After 20 minutes of sitting in a state trooper's car, he appears to leave. The video shows him struggling with the trooper as Gordon twice tried to get behind the wheel of the trooper's car. The trooper eventually fatally shoots him six times at close range. The trooper's union says he only used force as a last resort, fearing for his life. Gordon's mother is distraught. It's just difficult to watch. Pending an investigation, that New Jersey trooper is now on administrative leave. It's important to note that body cameras and dash cameras can offer an incomplete picture, but across the country after George Floyd's death in Minneapolis, they are currently getting renewed attention. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We've been telling you all evening long about some showers that will be developing along a cold front that will be sweeping through our area late tonight. And we're seeing that activity get its act together a little bit more right now in northwest Georgia and over into Alabama. A little bit earlier, we just saw a couple little showers with this, and now that line is developing a little bit more. And the heaviest activity is right now in northwest Georgia moving through the Calhoun area there in Gordon County. County. Earlier, when this was over in Chattooga County, we were detecting a little bit of a weak rotation with it, and the Weather Service issued what is called a significant weather advisory, saying that we needed to keep an eye on that rotation with winds of around 40 miles an hour. Right now, we're not seeing much of that rotation still with that, but we have some heavy rain moving up into the southern parts of Murray County, here through Gordon County, right along 75, and that extends into uh, just north of Rome into parts of Floyd County. That's where we have some of that heavier rain. We had some lightning with this earlier. Uh, now we've got a lightning strike with that right now around Calhoun. So if you're in Gordon County, you probably just heard thunder with that too. That stretches up into Murray County and then moves up into a parts of, of uh, Tennessee. And then south of this, uh, south of Rome and into West Georgia, and into moving into Cleburne County and later into Randolph County, we have this part of the system developing and that's all ahead of that cold front that's moving our way. And this line is going to sweep through our area over the next a couple of hours. And then once it moves out, we're going to see the drier air that'll move our way. I want to show you again one of our high resolution forecast models. We were showing you this earlier that was kind of overstating that line of showers, but now that is starting to verify as we see that rain that is coming in from uh, northwest Georgia and approaching Atlanta. But as it gets closer to us, it looks like it's going to weaken somewhat and we'll have just a few showers coming through. We shouldn't see anything big time severe with this. You know, we'll just watch that little bit of rotation that was coming out of Chattooga and we'll make sure that doesn't redevelop as it moves up toward the north and the east. And then once that passes through, it's going to be out of here. It's going to be through Atlanta around midnight and then over to the east of us after midnight. And then that's going to be the end of the rain. The cold front will have moved through. We'll see the winds behind it shifting and then the drier air starts to come in and we see our rain chances disappear here tomorrow. In fact, we're going to have a lot of sunshine tomorrow, lower humidity around temperatures will get up into the mid 80s. Once we get into the afternoon hours, right at about 85 for our high, we're going to go with a nine on the wisometer. That's our scale from one to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. Here's that last bit of moisture. You see it sweeping through here tonight. Once we get through the overnight hours, it's gone. And then we have that northwest wind that pushes the rain out and it brings in that drier air and lower relative humidity, decreasing clouds tomorrow. Uh, highs near 85 and then mostly sunny Friday and Saturday on Sunday, a little more moisture, just a 20% chance for a shower and then mainly dry Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, partly cloudy with highs in the mid 80s. I join our 30 club baseball operations officials as they recognize on behalf of our entire industry that systemic racism and inequality are devastating problems that we can each do more to help. MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred opened up tonight's MLB draft with a call to action for more to be done to stop racial injustice. A strong message for all of the draft picks to hear, including the Braves pick who went at number 25, Jared Schuster, a left-handed pitcher out of Wake Forest. So what do you need to know about Schuster? Well, teams noticed a huge improvement from his first two years to his junior year, especially in his changeup. Not known for a ton of speed, but he's very athletic, and that's something that made him a desirable choice for the Braves scouting department. Be athletic, and that we could uh, show him a few things. And you know, getting better, you, you need the athleticism in order to get better, and you, you need the size and strength that he has uh, to be able to log in into the major leagues. So we feel like we got a nice package. 
As for Georgia's local players, UJ ace Emerson Hancock was the first local player drafted number six overall to the Seattle Mariners. And now for 11 of the last 13 years, a Georgia high school player has been drafted in the first round. Decatur infielder Jordan Walker was selected number 21 to the St. Louis Cardinals. He told us before the draft he was just going to celebrate by having taco night with his family. Today, NASCAR officially banned the Confederate flag from all events. The sport released a statement saying the flag goes against the sport's welcoming and inclusive environment. Then tonight in Martinville, the African-American driver Bubba Wallace debuted his Black Lives Matter car. It's number 43. And right now, Martin Tro Jr. just took the checkered flag to the win. Today, Major League Soccer officially announced its returns to games with the MLS's back tournament. It's a World Cup style event to be held at Disney Orlando. All 26 teams will train and report to Disney for the tournament to start July 8th. There will be regular three regular season games then a knockout stage that will lead to the championship on August 11th. Every game will be nationally televised and after the tournament, though, there are still a lot of questions about how and when the regular season will start. But Commissioner Don Garber wanted the league to return as soon as possible. Getting out early is important, and it's not necessarily getting out first because you got to get it right. Uh, but getting out there and ensuring that we have the certainty to play games is crucial to the future success of the league. Uh, without the concept of a tournament, we'd still be sitting here waiting. When negotiations were contentious and players were concerned about their health, there will be testing every other day, but not for staff who won't be in direct contact with players like Disney workers and drivers. So there's still a threat of getting sick, but Atlanta United's goalkeeper says they just have to stay focused. You have to be able to put it to the side uh, as difficult as it is. Um, you know, we 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 understand uh, our job is to go and play games um, and Orlando was voted on. It was passed and now we have to go out and perform. And U.S. Soccer announced tonight that it is repealing its policy to require players to stand for the national anthem. They instituted that rule back when Megan Rapinoe knelt in 2016. In a statement, though, the organization said the policy was wrong and detracted from the important message of Black Lives Matter. That's it for sports. We'll be right back. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you. We're keeping an eye on some of those showers that are coming through northwest Georgia right now, approaching metro Atlanta over the next couple of hours. After that sweeps through tonight, we'll have decreasing clouds tomorrow. Comfortable day with low relative humidity. Staying dry mainly through the weekend, just a low risk for a shower Sunday, and then dry into next week with highs in the 80s. Slip over to 11 Alive right now. We'll show you those showers along with that front that's moving through on Up Lake. By outside workers, the best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. 